everyone this three questions with megan lawson <laughs> megan back on the podcast i feel i feel like you should have your own theme music now because you've been on the podcast <laughs> so many times <laughs> right that would be that's a good idea that reminds me of that scene from the holiday right where he walked writes the walk-up <laughs> songs for people i wonder what mine would be oh yeah i the holiday one of my i've never seen it is the holiday a good movie oh it's really good yeah all right but you have to wait till next december to watch it okay next dude, i missed i missed that time so hey little shout out holiday <laughs> God, that's the only shout out that's happening here okay so i asked megan to be on the podcast and she's been on she is like one she is she is uh the steve martin of my podcast you know steve martin's like the most hosted on SNL. so i did not know that that's an interesting fact I love steve, steve martin. it's like between steve martin and tom hanks so you could you could be you could pick which one you want to be so i, I don't know I, I don't know how many so you you i think you've actually just uh surpassed everybody for the most times on my podcast yeah which is wow. always good because we always have great conversation before and then we don't record it <laughs> and, and, and then we and then we do this part uh, so hey so i asked megan to be on my podcast because she is not actually launching a book right now she's in the process of editing it and it will be out very soon and so instead of actually waiting for the books to come out and i already have an invite for you when the book does come out um we talked about the idea of just actually kind of talking about the process because i know people are kind of interested in this part and i don't think they actually kind of get the behind the scenes of this too, because there's a lot of work that goes into it, right? Like you don't just all of a sudden, you know, write a book. So I, I wrote down a few questions and what I'm hoping to, and Megan and I talked about this, uh, I want to tell you the title of the book, but we haven't figured it out yet, right? And like, like even just talk about what's a little bit about that struggle over about the, you know, the title of the book. Well, and I care so much about this book and I want it to be impactful in the first, introduction anybody has to a book is the cover mm. the title so it feels really important and i can't seem to settle on anything right now that feels like it's clear and that it's also going to draw people in yet okay and so what we talked about and this is and if you're listening right now and if you're watching on youtube we want you to subscribe and that's like one of my goals this year is to encourage people to subscribe on youtube because i never say that i don't know why i'm like the only person on youtube who doesn't ask to subscribe and we're going to ask you for this comment. And so the comment I'm going to ask you based on Megan's description of the book, what was the suggestion? We should actually, I wonder if we should do like wrong answers only. <laughs> Have you ever seen those questions, right? Like, Hey, let's do, but we don't want wrong, wrong answers. We actually hope that somebody will give us a great idea. And if you do, we'll give you total credit for the, in the book too. So, um, if you in the comments down below, I'm going to ask Megan, what is the book about? And if you got an idea for a title and just, we'd love to hear your comments. So Megan, what ultimately, what is this book about? This book is about, you know, when we take great care of ourselves and we feel better in the work, the work gets better. And so what are small moves that we can make uh, to take great care of ourselves and our students in school that will make a big impact on learning? What ultimately... Uh, like, is there like something with small moves in there? I wonder. I said small moves. I said big impact. Is that a title? Small moves, big impact. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm playing with that. I don't know. Do people feel drawn to that? We'll find <laughs> out. I don't know. I'm I'm genuinely interested in what people have to say. Okay, so that's one part of it too. So if you got some ideas, start writing in the comments. But also, like, what do you ultimately hope this book achieves in education? Like, what do you hope maybe on the individual level? What do you hope on the school-based level for students? Anywhere along that, what, what do you hope this book achieves? So I would say that I've heard people say that these jobs used to be fun, that these jobs aren't fun anymore, that they're not enjoying the work. And I hope that this book makes these jobs seem more manageable um, and mm -hmm. that people um, you know, find more hope and joy in their work. And then in turn, um, kids can get really excited about learning and have really positive experiences at school every day. Yeah, and, and one of the one of the reasons, um, and if you don't, I don't know if Megan and I ever, ever talked about this because she's been on my podcast so many times, but probably if you if we did, we probably forgot about this. I remember uh, probably a couple of years ago, um, I was encouraging you to write. And you're like, I want to write a book. I'm like, write a blog first. Let's start with a blog. Let's get some writing done. And yeah, I'll, I'm like, I'm, I am 
I, I, I want to say I'm biased, but you kind of created the bias. Like your blog is one of my favorite blogs. Like I, it is one of the blogs that when I am reading blogs, I read consistently. Sometimes I like pull away from internet reading. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Like, I'm just like, I don't want to read anything on the internet. I just want to like read hard, you know, books. Um, but even, you know, I, uh, it's January 3rd. Your, your blog was literally the first one I read. Um, when I pulled up my RSS feed, which is like a very old school thing, your post that you did with Lauren Kaufman, which is actually linked down below the way that you kind of talk about some stuff that's challenging, but you also kind of give, you give solutions. Um, I, I just really appreciate that. I think it's, I think it's a, a gift that you have. And, um, I'm, I'm really excited cause I, I, I like, I'm like, a, I love your blog. It is one of my favorite things to read. Oh, thank you. I feel like. It was one of the most selfish things for me to encourage you to start blogging because I'm like, oh, yeah, now I got more good stuff to read. You know what I mean? And tweet, right? Because every time I tweet your blog, people just love it. Wow. I um, appreciated that you saw potential in me. And I think when somebody who you whose work you admire deeply and who has really impacted you professionally, like, sees something in you. I mean, I think it's the same for teachers in the classroom with our students. Like, it really means something. And because of you... I really have stuck with that blog and I've turned it into a book. You have, you have, and that's one of the things I, one of the things I really appreciate about someone who blogs. And I think if you want to write a book, and I think that's why we want to talk about this is just the consistency of writing. That's how you get better. I think we were both listening to the same book right now, the peak performance book, which I, we were talking about before the podcast. And it wasn't like practice makes perfect. It was like perfect practice makes perfect. And it just kind of that idea of like, constantly refining, trying to get better writing, I think is a, a really powerful process. So if you're listening down below, if you're listening, if you could down below in the comments, give us any suggestions for the book title, right? And this is a, this is a good opportunity. You could actually be, your title could be on the cover of the book. You'll totally get credited in the book um, if, if we decide to go with one. But yeah, we'd love to hear some ideas. Uh, some thoughts and maybe even some of your hopes for, you know, um, maybe some of the things that, cause Megan is actually still in the process of editing it too. Right. Which I'm really excited about. So let's talk about, um, that, that process, uh, of writing a book. And so, um, we'll start with the hard stuff. Like, what is like, what have you struggled with as you're writing this book? Like, what are some of the challenges that you've had? What are some of the struggles that you're kind of, you know, trying to overcome through this process? Like, I, I think a lot of people, they kind of just see the end of a book. They don't see what the writer goes through. So talk a little bit about that. Well, I would start by saying that because you encouraged me to blog every week and I, and I blogged consistently, I got a feel for what I believe and what's important to me. And also by putting my, my writing out there, which can be a little scary for some of us, I got to understand more about what people connected with. So as far as like actually drafting a book, that you would think that would be really hard, but because I made that um, intentional commitment over an extended period of time, and people might say like, wow, well, writing a blog post a week for two years, like that sounds like it would be really hard. I really enjoyed that part. And the draft of the book came together for me because of that process um, pretty smoothly. The most challenging part for me now is content revisions, right? Like that goes forward to an editor and then they take that first pass at the book and just as far as the content goes, you know, give you really constructive feedback for your consideration. And I got some really great feedback, but it started to change. It starts to change the book, you know, and like I had an original idea of what I thought this book was going to be. Um, and it's still the book, but it's just different than what I had in my mind. There's two chapters that I've totally rewritten. Um, I, I thought the book was going to be in parts. Now I'm not thinking it will be. Um, and so just sort of that letting go of like conceptually the original um, idea I had and really kind of leaning into um, someone's objective feedback really yeah. has touched me. The thing that I say to the authors um, that write for Impress and I think is really important is that you want the criticism before the book is published not after. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I think that's where you want some of the harshest, you know, criticism and not criticism to tear down, but to build up. And I think right. that's a really important aspect. There's something that you said that I think is really important to me. And it's, it's so great to hear that you say that because I felt that I, I never suggest to anyone something I, I don't do myself. And part of the reason that I suggested you blog is because I do it. And I've been doing it for, I think, 12, 13 years now. And uh, I've at least written, you know, one to two times a week for that, that, that time. 
Uh, sometimes when I was a principal, I was writing probably like 10 times a week, which was insane to think about how much I was writing then. But the idea, a lot of people, when they're start a Instagram, Twitter, even like long form blog, their focus is on sharing their voice. And I get that, right? But I think what I, I find really powerful is how you use those spaces to find your voice and find what you're passionate about. And people know me for my work in innovation. Uh, someone even wrote today, like, hey, I've written these books, but you know, innovator's mindset is what he's known best for. Even, even I got that today, you know, in, in 2023. And if you'd asked me when I first started blogging, was I really excited about innovation? I had no idea. But what I noticed was I kept writing about that topic over and over and over again. I'm like, oh, there's something here. Like there's something I'm like, you know, passionate about. And I kind of find that when you're writing to learn as opposed to writing to sharing your learning are two different aspects. I think it's a good process to go through as an educator as well, is that you are modeling something to yourself. It's not just to share that stuff. It's actually to kind of articulate your thoughts. And you, you, you found that through that process? Like you, you kind of found your voice. Did that change for you at all, that aspect of it? Well, it, it did teach me a lot about what I thought about things, sitting down to actually type out what you think. We all are reflecting and thinking throughout the day, but then to be able to go back and see what I think, what I'm thinking consistently, how my thinking is changing over time whenever I'm exposed to different stimulus. I mean, it's really like, I've heard you talk about the power of digital portfolios for students. Mm -hmm. In essence, that's what this has been doing for me. I and mean, I think for a lot of people who think that they might want to write a book, it's really daunting to think like, what am I going to write about a whole book about? Right. But if you spend time with yourself in the writing process over an extended period of time consistently, you start to realize that, that there are some threads and some themes that are emerging um, that are really important to you, that matter so much to you that you would want to put a book into the world and hope that it could help other people in some way. And that was my experience. That idea, and I think is something that is Clive Thompson, and this is paraphrasing, I, I don't know the quote off the top of my head exactly, but he said, anyone can win an argument inside their head. When you have to face an audience, you have to be truly convincing. So part of it too is finding your own voice through that process, but being thoughtful and like, hey, what are, what are people gonna think about this? Am I saying this the right way? Am I, you know, maybe am I like missing out on something here? And it, it, like, I always talk about that idea of the 360 view. You're trying to get the perspectives of other people through your writing as well. Like what will be the challenge to this too? So I, I love that. Cause I think like, I'm a big believer in this. And I think if we don't see that value in a world where there's chat GPT right now, that I can just say, Hey, write this essay on this for me. And people don't see the value in writing to learn. Then they'll just do that too. Right. Cause 2023 equivalent of looking in the back of the textbook for the math answers, right? Like if I don't see the value, I'm just going to find the answers in the back and say, I did my homework. The challenge is, so what, has been like the best part of this book, like writing this book. What have you most enjoyed through this process? I've really enjoyed the power of storytelling. And I've um, been in our profession long enough now where it's, I have some stories. Um, and I think, you know, storytelling is one of the earliest ways that we as human beings have learned and it connects all of us. Um, and so spending time in my own stories has given me appreciation for all the people who've impacted me along the way, the lessons I've learned, even the hard lessons. And then also just, I'm really enjoying the process of making things practical and speaking simply and plainly about things. I think sometimes we can get caught up in some edgy jargon and we make things sound um, big and complicated. Um, and really at the end of the day, there's some really essential things that I think we all hold true. And if we can find our way back to those things and find some really practical ways to apply them to our lives in the classroom, it can make a big impact on our on us and on our students, figuring out what that looks like for the busy teacher who may not have a lot of time to, to read a big book, but maybe a shorter, heartfelt, smart book mm -hmm. could do something for them. I feel really committed to that cause and I'm just excited that it could impact people in a positive way. That's, that's one of the things I love about your blog is the idea of like, when I read your blog, <laughs> I'm trying to like word this in the proper way. It takes complex ideas and makes them simple. And I think a lot of times I, I listen to people speak or read their writing and I feel dumber through the process. Cause I'm like, I have to Google half the stuff they said. And I think sometimes people use certain language to show how smart they are, but don't necessarily, you know, really connect with the reader and lose people along the way. Right. And I think part of it too, the, the, the beauty of it is that when you read something, when you hear a story, part of what you do really brilliantly, and I know that comes through in this book, comes through in your blog 
is that people see themselves in the story. And I think that's, that's, that's powerful, right? Cause if you make a connection, you know, to that, like I, 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 I always enjoy the story, you know, like, um, the, the story of the, you know, the guy who like had to cut his arm off cause he's stuck in a mountain. Like that's a fascinating story, but <laughs> I don't see my, I'm not climbing mountains. So I don't really connect with that. Like it's a powerful story too. I don't, I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. Isn't that a movie about that or something like that? Yes. I know what you're talking about. But you talk about things that are very everyday things that we experience. And then I'm like, Oh yeah, that totally happened to me that, you know, and I feel, and then it starts to connect. And I think that's a real power in writing um, is how do you get the reader to see themselves in the story? And I think you do a beautiful job with that. Mm, I really, I really, really appreciate that. I mean, I think something that I have enjoyed, but it'll be interesting to see how it plays out for the reader is, I had to be really honest. Um, If we're going to have a really honest, like I want this book to feel a little bit like a conversation between two people who care about our profession, Um, you know, me and whoever is on the other side of that book. And in order to have an honest conversation, I have to be able to share stories that aren't about painting me in some kind of heroic light, but actually are just honest about what my experience Mm -hmm. was and then how that experience made me better. And I find myself drawn to really honest conversations right now professionally so that we don't make leadership something that's beyond right. the everyday person or for something that only perfect people do. There are no perfect people. I think the more people can see that they, their own potential to make a difference, the better we'll all be in the long run. And, and that's, and that's what people are going to really appreciate about the book is that um, sometimes it's like, you should do this or you should do that. As soon as you tell me I should, I don't want to. Right. But if I learn from your experience, learn from your stories, the not only the ups and the, but the downs, some of the struggles um, through that process, and you do that beautifully, I, I know people are going to really connect with this. So, Megan, thank you so much for being on the podcast. When is the book supposed to be coming out? Do you have an idea? I think we're hoping for late April or May uh, so that teachers would have access to this book when they're building their summer reading list. Love it. And so look for the books to come out. We'll give you more information as it's going out. We really want those those title suggestions. So I would love to hear some of the, the ideas uh, of what you have or just anything in the comments down below on YouTube. Megan, thanks so much for being on the podcast. I really appreciate you not only as a colleague, but as a friend. I love talking to you every single time and uh, I hope all is well. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'm looking forward to the book coming out. Thank you so much. Thanks everybody for listening. Have a wonderful day. 